those of you who weren't here, I covered the theory of music learning theory and explained all the levels and how they interact and work. And now today, what uh, Dr. Gilbo has asked me to do is to talk to you about application and practical application. And I enjoy that very much. I'm happy to do it. And I realize that's probably something you all have a great deal of interest in. Now, it's been suggested to me that I not start out on my own agenda, but that I take 10 questions from the class because there's such an array of different things. Some want to know about music aptitude. How do you, uh, what does that mean? How do you use it? Want to know how you teach improvisation? How do you teach instrumental music? <clears throat> and I would be delighted to go through all that on my own schedule, but I'd be very happy to take questions immediately and let you kind of direct it because I'd like this to be a worthwhile expenditure of time for you. So would somebody like to start and ask me questions? And if you run out of questions, I'll go back to my own agenda. Questions, anybody? Nothing? Okay, well, I don't know who suggested this to me. I don't know where they are. But uh, I'm going to start. Well, they're, they're, I asked them all to have several questions in mind when they came to see you. Well, it's okay. I would just soon teach you. It's my early. Agenda. I was just <laughs> trying to be, uh, how do I say, cooperative, but I'd much rather teach my own way. So uh, I'm glad you don't have questions. <laughs> okay, quick quick review. We start out at the oral oral level. We establish context. If I'm at the oral oral level, I use a neutral syllable. And that tells my class I want them to start audiating major. If I'm in minor, la da 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 da. I don't just start singing patterns, because if I do, they have no context to give the pattern meaning. As I said yesterday, there's so many teachers who teach ba da di da 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 a descending minor third, but it has no meaning unless the children are audiating a tonic. If they're audiating this, bum bum has one meaning. If they're audiating la do mi so, and they hear so me, but they're audiating la. It's a whole different meaning. So one of the things we learned very early on is you must establish context if you want what you're teaching to be long lasting. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Now a lot of oh, times. Oh, listen, I forgot to tell you, my hearing is impaired. So you have to speak loudly. A lot of times when I'm teaching, I'll give the tonal sequence. And once the, kid, once the kids get used to that, you know, <laughs> they'll start to sing with me. <laughs> is that OK? Yeah. Because as long as they don't disturb anybody else from audiating it. Okay. But I would say let them so sing. correctly, so it's not like they're way it's off. Not shot. No, let them do it. The thing is, make sure when you do it, you can use my establishment of so la so fa mi re ti do, or if you're in minor, mi fa mi re do ti si la. Notice that it has no established duple or triple meter. If you sing la da da pa pi da pa bam. It establishes duple meter. So if they're going to sing, make sure they don't do it in a meter. Because if they do, if they use it in one meter, then they find it difficult to use it in another. So I establish context. All of my syllables are from the front of the mouth, called labials. It's like a little baby just born, babbling. We find that they can use this and get along very, very quickly. I use gestures. I don't say very, very much. My hands come out, and this means wait, please, until I tell you to sing. Why do I want you to pause? I want you to pause because if you don't, you're going to imitate my last pitch, and you're not going to audiate. You're just going to imitate. Most children will do it, most students, and even student juries, they don't think. They don't, before they sing, they just pick up the last pitch and use it as a reference point. So, and I say, wait, and then I say, breathe. Why do I want you to breathe? So I can get you to audiate before you sing. 
So many students just sing without thinking about what they're going to sing. So if I say, um, bum, bum, pause, during the breath, they will inhale <coughs> and think about what they're going to sing. Um, we haven't met before, have we? Yesterday. Yesterday. Watch him. Tell me your name, please. Matt. Matt, tell me more about yourself. I play the bass. What else? Just see what he just said. I asked him a question that I, no one really asked him before. As soon as I ask him his name, Matt, he knows it. But I asked him a question now that he has to think about. And what did he do? Took a pause. He inspired, he breathed. And that's very important, and we must do the same thing with music. Yum, bum, bum, pause, breathe. And make students breathe. In other words, you have to have gestures. And don't conduct. And whatever you do, don't do this, because then they <clears throat> choke. It's down, like you're bouncing a ball. Yum, bum, bum. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Yum, bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Okay? So that's at the oral, oral level. Now, at the verbal, so this is just a quick review of what we did yesterday. <coughs> at verbal association, instead of using neutral syllables, <coughs> we use solfege. So, la, so, fa, mi, re, ti, do, mi, so, do, ti, re, mi, do, so, do. <clears throat> and so we start teaching tonal patterns very, very quickly at the oral, oral level. Now this is practical application. Do you want me to talk more about this, or do you get the idea of how to go about it to teach patterns? We don't teach individual notes, we teach patterns. In the same way in language, we don't teach children to read the alphabet, they read words. In music, we teach them to read tonal patterns, two to three pitches. Matching pitch, dealing with individual pitches, doesn't make a great deal of sense. Okay, <clears throat> so, rhythm. Ba, 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 establishing duple. Ba, 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 establishing triple. When I get to verbal association, do, de, do. Triple, do, da, de, do. If I'm in five, an unusual pair, do be do bobby, do be do. Seven, do be do be do bobby, do be do be do. And then they chant the rhythm patterns. And so that's practical application of how we do oral, oral, and verbal association. Now, <clears throat> that's the quick review. I'll be glad to explain more if you want to ask me. Okay, now I've taught my students this, and they can sing tonal patterns and rhythm patterns, and uh, I've done a few more things with them. Now, the, your question to me is, okay, this is all music learning theory, and it makes a lot of sense, but how does it relate to making music? <coughs> how, how do we use this in the classroom beyond just doing these exercises? Uh, I've had children say to me, can we do real music? And I've had teachers say, well, these are all exercises and I teach music. How does all this relate to teaching? And that's what I'd like to do right now is give you a demonstration. My classes have done tonal patterns, rhythm patterns, done some improvisation, everything else in learning theory, partial synthesis. And one day I walk in and I just simply say to them, listen, please. Yum ba dum ba da da, yum ba da ba dum, bum ba dum ba da da, yum ba da ba dum. La da di ya da bum bi ya dum bum bum bum, bum ba dum ba da da, yum ba da ba dum. Now I'm in classroom music now. I'm not doing learning theory. Doing classroom activities. And I'll say, you've just heard the song, was it in major or minor? How would you know? If I'm singing yum ba da ba da da, bum ba da ba dum, I trust that you're oye de oye 